We're going to talk a little bit more about Bode plots and how we can use them to actually stabilize system to choose a controller. And I want to reiterate one thing that I found confusing when I was learning controls and why we're looking at the Bode plot and what exactly it is. So the Bode plot is the frequency response of just g of s. So this is a system and we're taking it open loop. So when we say the open loop frequency response, we mean just g of s. So some plant. Usually, so I'm going to put GP of S here, so the plant system. And we say open loop because we intend to put it in a closed loop. So we're going to put it in a closed loop right, with some feedback. And actually, I'm going to leave room for a second controller here. So we're going to put it in feedback with some sort of reference. And this is negative feedback. And we may or may not need to add some sort of controller here. So we look at the Bode plot and all that stability analysis we're doing where we're seeing how far the phase margin and the gain margin, how far it is from negative 180 degrees and amplitude of 1, which is corresponds to dB, 0 dB, right, we're, we're looking at those things. That's all because we want to see what happens when we connect it in this type of feedback. And if we find that our system, our GP, doesn't, is unstable, it doesn't have, it has a negative phase margin, meaning that it's unstable, it's phase goes past negative 180 degrees once at the cutoff frequency, sorry, crossover frequency, then we need to add something here, some controller, so GC, to try to stabilize our system. So this might be proportional control, it could be some sort of gain, it could be a few different types of controllers. I'm not going to explain all of them, but there's some called lead lag and lead lag, all these different types of controllers that are pretty well studied in text that you can put into here. So I'm just going to talk today about if you have an unstable system here in the plant and unstable in that if you connected it through this type of feedback where this is your Y reference and this is your output Y, right? Just like we've been doing before, then what kind of controller can you add here to make sure that when you put everything together in feedback, your output will be stable. Okay, so we're going to run over to MATLAB and we're going to look at a system and then we're going to talk about ways to try to stabilize it by looking at the Bode plot. So here's an example that I picked in MATLAB and I'm going to make this a plant. And you can see here, uh, we're, I just made this function and we can look at the Bode plot in MATLAB using this function. And when it comes up, I like to put the grid on here so that you can see the lines better. So if we put the grid on now, we can see this is our gain. So we are above zero at low frequencies and then we have to attenuate at higher frequencies. And you can see the phase will also change from negative 90 down to negative 270. And if we look at the point where it crosses the crossover frequency, we see that, approximately, we definitely have a negative phase margin. So it means our system is unstable, and we need to do something to fix it. And in this system, what we can do is if we change, there's a few things we can do, but we're going to go through each one. The first one we're going to try is to actually change the gain of the system. So if we change the gain, the phase should be exactly the same, but the body plot will move up or down based on our how much gain, well, gain you multiply it by. So this would be like proportional control. And what we want to do is decrease this so that the crossover frequency moves to the left, and so that if we move it down enough, then we'll hit above. We want the crossover frequency to be around here so that we become positive. And if we want to check the stats of our system, and I have, I'm cheating a little bit, I have some commands already queued up here, but 
This is a command that will tell you the margin, so the phase margin of your system. So we're going to do that on GP here. So we can see the phase margin is negative here, and the gain margin, the gain that we'd have to multiply our system by to make it zero is at, at negative 180, would be this value. So we want to multiply our system by some value that's smaller than this. Okay, so let's now pick a gain, and we're going to say, so we're going to make three different functions. Our first one, this is our control, g1 is going to be multiplying this, the whole function by 0 0.05. So if we go back to our function real quick, I'm going to press hold on so that we can see the difference between the two plots. And then if we go back to our Bode plot, and now multiply it by g1, so we're pretty much taking, you know, we're applying the control, we will see that, so we were the blue line and now the new one is the green line. And you can see with that one we've moved our crossover frequency down to a lower frequency and it looks like we are now at a positive gain margin. So if you want to check that out, we can go back to the margin command and just multiply it by our full system, the two, the, the plant and the controller together. And we get a positive phase margin. Not by much, but technically this would be stable. Okay, So that's one way we've stabilized our system. And I'm going to make a list here just to remember. So things that we can do to stabilize a closed loop system based on the open loop Bode plot. Okay, so one is change the gain. And what I mean by that is apply proportional control to shift, shift um, the crossover frequency. Okay. So we can do that, change the gain to try to, like we just showed, to try to change the crossover frequency and improve it. Okay, so that's what we did here. Okay, so there's a few other ways. We're going to look at another way to do it. Another way that essentially if we want to move the crossover frequency, but we don't want to shift the entire curve, we can apply something called a lag controller. And we're going to try to just decrease this part of the curve, the lower part of the curve, and not try not to affect the phase as much. So let's look at a new controller. This is called a lag controller. And I'm not going to go into how you design these. You can look in the book or read up on it. I just want to show you how it affects this. So this is a lag controller. You essentially use one zero and one pole, and you place them next to each other at a lower frequency to try to decrease the frequency, the gain up here. So that was confusing, so I'll just show you in a Bode plot of just the, design, the gain by itself. So we're going to have to close this one. So let's look at Bode plot of just gain 2 so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we put a gain and we have it, we have it decreasing here. So we're going to try to just decrease the gain at the higher frequencies while not changing the phase too much. In our when we multiply it by our new body plot. Okay, so let's go back to this. We're gonna plot this again. Okay, so this is the original one. We're gonna grid on and we're gonna hold on. And then we're gonna multiply it by G2 this time. Okay, so let's see what our two body plots look like. Okay, so what happened here is the lag controller at low frequencies, it doesn't affect the gain that much. It does have, as we get towards this, this point, this is where the pole and zero are placed, we have some kind of phase shift down here. And then after that, that area, we have a decrease in our magnitude and a lesser effect on our phase shift here. So if we look for a crossover frequency, it's over here. And it looks like we've shifted the crossover frequency enough that we have a positive phase margin here. So again, let's go back to our phase margin, and let's calculate, just to make sure, what happens once we multiply it by the second gain. Okay, so here we have a positive phase margin, and we have some gain margin as well. So we've successfully stabilized this system as well by using a lag controller.
Okay, so our second way to do it, so if we don't want to change the gain, we can use a lag controller or compensation is sometimes compensation. So compensation and contro controller are essentially the same thing here. So control to decrease that gain above a okay. And with this one, you have to read up on it, but you want to place this the pole and zero low enough that it doesn't affect the rest of your system. So that because here we have this negative gain, if you put that too high, it'll actually decrease your gain here. So you have to place that lower so that the effect of the decrease is at higher frequencies. Okay. So if you're still with me, I hope you are, we're going to do one more. It's called lead compensation. And the idea here is that, so I'm going to kill this one. The idea here is that we want to boost the phase at the actual crossover frequency because originally our phase was too low. So if we go back to, is it this one? Nope. If we go back to this one, our phase was, this is the original plant system, our phase was too low, so if we boost our phase at that frequency, we try to keep the cutoff frequency about the same, but just boost the phase up. So we can use a lead compensator to do that. I've already designed one here, so here's our lead compensator, and here again we're using two poles, or sorry, one pole and one zero, and when we look at this in the Bode plot of just this one, we will see that, so here's our phase boost, this is where we're boosting the phase, and we're going to have some effect on the magnitude as well, but we want to decrease that as much as possible. So we end up putting our pole and zero very close to each other. Here, they're at, it's at two and three in order to decrease the effect here and get just enough uh, phase boost to achieve stability. Okay, so if we take this, now this is called the lead compensator, and we apply this to our new system. So we're going to do body plot of GP. I'm going to grid on, hold on. And then we're going to add the next one. So GP now times the third controller times the lead con controller. We will get here. So you can see the green is now the, the new system, and there was some effect on the gain, but it was minimal. I think it was only about a few dB. And then here we have the crossover frequency is about the same, but we have now a boost in the phase such that it actually becomes positive. So one more time doing our system here. Okay, so Use G3, so now with the lead compensator, we again have found that we have pushed the phase up enough that it is positive in the crossover frequency. So those are three different ways. So here is our little chart again. So the third way that you can do it, and there's more ways than this, this is just three examples that I'm using, is to use a lead compensation to boost gain at uh, crossover frequency. Okay, so these are three different things that we can do. The first two are mostly about changing the gain so that you can change the crossover frequencies. And these ways, you both decrease the crossover frequency, which does decrease your bandwidth, which is one consideration. With this one, you're going to have some effect on the gain, but you're going to be able to boost the compensation, sorry, the phase margin at your desired cutoff frequency. So you won't lose as much bandwidth from this approach. There's other ways to do this. Um, this is just one way that people, these are three examples, and I hope that gave you some idea about, of how we do it. With each of these examples, we were able to achieve stability with our system just using different ways. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, go in MATLAB and play with it for yourself because it makes more sense that way. 
um, but I hope that gave a good introduction. So thanks. Just one quick correction. I actually meant to say for the lead conversation, it's a boost in phase at the cross of the river not gain. So sorry for the confusion, uh, but lead conversation boosts the phase at the cross of the river